Hello, my name is Elizabeth Alexis and this presentation focuses on the funeral ritual in Islam. And before we go forward, I would like to introduce my group members, Marissa Taylor, Roxanne Lara and Mary Ann Allen. And we do hope that you enjoy the presentation. This slide deals with the various aspects of the Islamic funeral ritual that are performed before the actual burial and according to the Islamic laws, Sharia, the burial of a Muslim is usually within 24 hours of death to protect the living from any sanitary issues. However, it is acceptable to delay the burial in cases where a Muslim has been a victim of foul play or was, a, 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 a was killed in battle. It is very important to determine the cause of death in such instances. Secondly, the body is washed by a person of the same sex, Gus termed gusul. The body of a child can be washed by either a man or a woman. The spouses are allowed to wash the body of their partner in the, in the event of death. Washing is done graveside if available or in a mask while the body is being washed a white cloth is put on top of it and after cleaning the body is wrapped in a white cloth called kafan and secured with ropes here's an image of a person giving gusul which is the washing of the body a gusul is basically done to physically cleanse the deceased and it must be done with heated water the other image represents a body wrapped in, in kafan, which is the simple plain cloth and secured with ropes. This is done to respect the dignity and privacy of the deceased. The kafan used should be simple and modest and it is for, for that reason most Muslims prefer to use a white cloth. So I'll now hand you over to my colleague M Marissa Taylor. Thank you, Elizabeth. I will now be presenting on the funeral prayer. The Islamic faith believes that the death of a fellow member is a loss for the entire community. So, the funeral prayer should be performed by all members of the community, which is led by the holy leader, the Imam. The funeral prayer is done to ask for forgiveness from the dead. Besides the actual prayer, the reading from the Quran is done. The service usually lasts from about 30 to 60 minutes. Though the prayers should be recited at the mosque, they should not be recited inside the mosque, but instead it is performed in a prayer room, study room, or in the mosque courtyard. During this time, the body and all attendees should be turned to face Mecca, which is the holy center of Islam, and form at least three lines with the male most close related to the deceased in the first line, followed by the other male mourners, then the children, then the woman will assemble after. So you can see that during the Islamic religion has a close-knit relationship among its members and even in that it is considered a loss for everyone. I will now hand you over to Roxanne. In continuation of Marissa's explanation of the prayers for the funeral service, I'll be talking about the procession for the funeral service location, which is usually held at the mosque to the grave site. Now, traditionally, Imams requested that male mourners carry the body to the cemetery on foot, and funeral goers walk in front of and the back of, and the right of, or at the left of the coffin. In modern times now, the body can be transported in a hearse with a funeral procession around it. And the funeral procession should happen in silence, meaning no singing, loud crying, or reading the Quran is allowed. Also, no incense or candles in the funeral procession is allowed, and the body should be transported in a calm but a hastened manner. In analyzing the reasons for this part of the funeral, um, it was observed that a lot of it was handed down from the older heads or the older scholars within the religion. So 
the imams and scholars from long ago, they were insistent on having the male mourners carry the deceased since it was believed through messages passed down from the Prophet Muhammad that when someone died, that angels were walking with everyone so that it would be a sign of disrespect to Allah and to the deceased and to the angels to ride in any form of transport while the angels walk in to accompany them. <clears throat> it is also a Muslim belief that there is life after death. So most of the rituals for the deceased person is to ensure peaceful transition from burial to the day of judgment. And for this reason, during the procession in many countries, women as well as children were seen as being extremely emotional during the mourning period. And since this is a solemn time for everybody, they were forbidden for being, from being near to the deceased to avoid any kind of loud crying or any kind of distractions from the mourners who at that time supposed to be asking for Allah's mercy and forgiveness on behalf of the deceased. So they did not want any kind of distraction, meaning the can same candles, um, the incense, anything like that, no fires or anything like that to distract them from that meditation and from that time of, um, you know, trying to make peace or trying to intercede on behalf of the deceased. And now we'll continue with Anne and Elizabeth who will explain what happens during the burial and thereafter. So, continuing from Roxanne's part of the presentation, I am Elizabeth Alexis and I will be looking at the burial aspect of the funeral. The first point, since Muslims believe there will be a physical resurrection of the body on Judgment Day, the faith prohibits cremation. Embalming is considered a desecration of the body and is only performed if it is required by law. In the same breath, autopsies are strongly discouraged since they delay burial and are considered yet another desecration of the body. Second point, only men are allowed to attend the actual grave service. The faith believes that females, especially those who are close or who were close to the deceased, are generally prone to cry when emotional and Muslims believe that the display of strong emotions may upset the soul of the dead. So to avoid this public display, Islamic customs forbid women from attending the actual burial ceremony. Instead, the women remain at the mosque or at the house for the burial ceremony where they, create, where they recite a, a prayer for the dead person's soul and it's easier for them to cope as well. The grave should be perpendicular to the direction of Qibla, that is Mecca, so that when buried, when the person is buried, the body is facing Mecca. Mecca is basically the holy center of the Islamic faith and Muslims face in the direction of Mecca during prayer. And just as the deceased prayed in the, in the direction of Mecca, the deceased should face Mecca in death as he wants as he waits for the day of judgment. The grave is marked by a mound, which is an uneven piece of land, is, and is basically to prevent persons from sitting or walking on the grave. And the last point, those present pour three handfuls of soil while reciting from the Quran. When looking at the pictures on this slide, the first image is where the grave is being dug and remember, it must be perpendicular to the direction of Mecca. The second image is the body being placed into the grave with no casket of any kind because Muslims believe the earth absorbs the remains better but it is permissible in cases where the ground is wet to use caskets. When the body is placed in the grave, the ties are round his head and feet should be removed then the body should be covered with a piece of wood so that the earth does not directly touch the body and dirty it as the grave is filled those present will then pour three handfuls of soil into the grave and when pouring the first handful one should say of this we created you this meaning the earth when pouring the second handful 
the second person should say, and to it shall we cause you to return. When pouring the third handful, one should say, and of it we shall cause you to be resurrected a second time. The use of extravagant gravestones or special markers are discouraged. However, a, sm a small simple one is acceptable, as seen in the picture of the gravesite from long ago. This is because such lavish decorations glorifies the deceased when Allah is the only one who should be glorified. It also shows acceptance of the finite nature of human life. The last picture shows how modern-day Muslim graves are done, now and yet still, it's not stylish or decorative. So I'll now hand you over to Marianne. Official mourning lasts three days. It is natural to feel sorrow over a loss, whether it be concerning wealth and possession or losing a loved one. But Islam teaches Muslims to remain steadfast at all times. Allah does not say not to feel saddened by the death of a loved one after three days, but to carry on with life despite your loss and accepting it as the will of Allah. It is permissible to cry up to three days after death, but not permissible to yell or weep. Allah does not punish a person as a result of tears or of the sorrow of the heart, but Allah punishes or bestows his mercy as a result of this, the Prophet Muhammad said. Widows observe an extended mourning period around four months and ten days long in accordance with the Quran. This event is called Ida, wherein the widow is not allowed to remarry, move from her home or wear decorative jewelry or clothing. To the wives whose husbands die, they should observe a period of Ida for four months and ten nights, including the cases where the marriage was consummated or otherwise. The reason behind observing Ida period is to ascertain whether the woman is pregnant or not and to acknowledge the certainty of paternity. This period is considered as a balance by Islamic scholars by providing sufficient time to mourn the death of her husband and also protects the widow from criticism that she might be subjected for remarrying too quickly after her husband's death. Certain things are forbidden to Muslim women during this time of Ida. In Muslim personal law, the term haram is used for strictly prohibited things, such as it is haram upon a woman to indulge into the activities that beautifying herself during Ida. It is also forbidden to wear silken clothes or other gorgy dresses. She is not allowed to leave the house till the completion of Ida period unless there is some emergency. She is obligated to mourn for her husband by praying to Allah and supplicating. Allah subhanahu for her husband and for herself. On the third day, relatives visit the graves once more to pray over the dead. The dead is praised for all the good he has done and no negative comments are allowed. A banquet is thrown on the third day to remember the deceased. It is natural to experience grief for the death of a loved one. Therefore, weeping for the dead is allowed in Islam. However, this applies only to those cases where crying is accompanied without lamenting and wailing. Weeping without those two is permissible. It is forbidden to weep. Weeping means to yell or cry out loudly. Right? It is said by Islamic scholars. We took an oath before the messenger of Allah not to weep. Also, it is said that the dead suffers from and dislikes his family's weeping. The Prophet Muhammad said, Whosoever is wept upon will suffer as a result of this weeping. This is because the dead can hear the crying. This is reported by Imams, Bukhari and Muslims. It is prohibited to express one's grief by wailing shrieking, beating the chest or cheeks, tearing hair or clothes, scratches, faces, speaking phrases which may make Muslims lose their faith. So this brings us to the end of our presentation. 
and on behalf of my group members, Marissa, Roxanne, and Marianne, and myself, we say thank you and we hope that you found it interesting and informative. So, thank you.